Hi, welcome back. I thought I would try something a little different this time. So there are two videos that I've been meaning to make, both of which follow the restoration of two Series 3 Land Rovers that I have. The This video will be focusing on the, it's a Series 3 long wheelbase. Um, I believe it was made in 1977, which is the same age as me. And this particular model, or this particular vehicle, was bought by my father from a uh, military sur surplus auction back in 1980, I believe. And it has been in the family ever since. And there are limited uh, videos showing the restoration. My father restored it many years ago, and then it, it, it was off the road for a while. And then I sort of took up the mantle and did a restoration myself. Again, it was on the road for a few years. I, I used it regularly. It then ended up being parked in the in the garden. You'll you'll see its condition in a short while. And a about ten years ago, it sounds a long time, it, it is a long time. About ten years ago I, I thought, right, I I'm going to do another re restoration, get it back on the road, um and put it to use because it's it's a good vehicle. I I have many fond memories of it and I can't see it going to waste. So what I thought I'd do is go through a series of photographs that I've had or that I've taken over the years and just talk you through the different stages that it is that that it's been in and the the latter few images show the the restoration job, the current restoration job. So we'll start with um a quite an old picture. This is a photograph taken back in 1981 on one of the family holidays that we used to take. This, I believe, is in the Gower Peninsula in Wales. And that is me, stood on the spare wheel on the bonnet. I believe I was three or four when that was taken. And the chap here, that's my father. And obviously you can see the vehicle. And all of the other people in the, in the image are members of the uh, Air Cadet Force where my father was the commanding officer. So we used to, every year we used to go away uh, either to Wales or Cornwall and we'd have a sort of family holiday and bring a group of people along who wouldn't necessarily have had the chance to uh, to have a holiday like we, like we used to do. And we used to bring a boat as well and put it in the sea. All great fun. So that was back in 1981. Uh, and then, as I said, it went through a number of restorations. Sadly, I don't have any images of the restoration that my father did. Um, I was too young and we just didn't have the opportunity to take any pictures. However, the restoration that I started, um, the most recent one, about 10 years ago, was after it, the Land Rover had been left in our garden for a good five years so this is the condition that it was in quite a sorry state it had been left to the the garden had basically overgrown um, and you can see that it, the nature had started to reclaim it the actual vehicle itself was in fairly good condition obviously you know most of the body panels are made of aluminium the bulkhead was well treated uh, when on the original restoration that my father did, it was well, it was well uh, cleaned, it was prepared, it was well painted. So, touch wood, there wasn't much ru uh, much rust uh, involved. So after a bit of clearing and taking back the weeds, you can see that we now have access to it. The um, all of the body panels, it, it was it was hand painted, sort of um, uh, drab olive green. Um, that was me. I did, I did that. It's um, not the best finish in the world, but again, it kept the body body panels clean, kept them fresh-ish. Um, you can see that the where the window panes are, all of the um, I can't remember what they're called. All of all of the parts, that the the window, the glass sits in all of the that that was completely rusted. It was it was full of all sorts of gunk. The actual roof rack. Um, was one that my father made that was in really good condition because at the time he had it uh, zinc galvanized so other than a few very minor patches of rust it was in really good condition 
there's a, another shot so you can see that the roof rack is in good condition um, you'll be able to see in a few more it, it, late, later on in the images that the this was retrofitted by myself to run an LPG and that's what these two tanks are at the top and if you the keen-eyed amongst you will spot another chassis just off to the right that is the Land Rover that I will be talking about in my next video so as you can see the the actual body panels they're, they're covered in uh, mold but other than that they're in fairly good condition there is a there's a minor ding here that it, it got over the years but mo most of the body panels are in pretty good condition even the roof this has a safari roof the weeds had grown in between and started to come through but other than that I think there was a footprint on, on one of the panels at the top but it's not too bad um, minor bit of rust just here if you can see where the uh, where the window where the hinge is but other than that that's the only damage that was on the bulkhead even the spare wheel um, a few surface rust but other than that nothing really so after a, a short while a friend of mine or a couple of friends they came along and helped me uh, pull it out they towed it with a transit van and a friend of the family had a large garage that I was allowed to uh, use for the restoration so we towed it just a few miles up the road and got it inside the garage it's a really good garage and there is a video clip that I will want that I want to play a little later and if anybody is still watching at the end of the video um, pay attention to this building this this garage because it features again in the video clip um, I won't spoil it but it's interesting so it ended up in this large garage which is uh, owned by a friend of the family and that gave me the conditions and the opportunity to start stripping it down to rebuild so one of the first things I wanted to have a look at um, apologies for the quality of the picture these were taken on a 12 year old mobile phone uh, the, the video the picture quality is not very good and the the video quality is not much better so the first thing I wanted to do was see what the actual condition the engine was in and the, the running gear and as you as you can expect it had sat for six or seven years without any any kind of maintenance I, birds animals had made nests inside it was absolutely full of gunk so I spent a good few hours stripping everything out, cleaning everything out. My plan at the time was to use the engine, which is a standard five main bearing, two and a quarter litre. Um, again, the keen eyed amongst you will spot the gas conversion um, equipment. So there is there's a filter here. The, I've taken out the air filter and the hose that goes across and feeds in. But basically this this is where the, the gas comes down through here into the into the unit on the just hidden behind the radiator on the right there. That then um, reduces the gas pressure to usable and then it's then this is then fed using this device here into the, the main air feed into the carburetor. So you would in, on this this particular version you would start it in petrol mode let the engine warm up and then you would flick it to the intermediate so basically you were turning off both fuel sources and you would wait for the vehicle to start to cough and then you would flick the gas on and it would spring back to life at least that's what it was meant to do 99 percent of the time so a few more images of the uh, the engine bay again the radiator was in fairly good condition uh, surprisingly i had actually drained it uh, which was good because obviously it, it had been sat for seven winters and that's not good for radiators so I started to strip it down took all the doors off took the seats out all of the uh, body panels inside and you can see it's it's not in that bad a condition um, the actual footwells part of the reconditioning that my father did years ago he replaced those because as is standard with all series type Land Rovers they uh, they just rust away 
and that's what had happened with this one so he basically replaced those panels and again they were in really good condition so not much needed on that the actual gearbox was fitted with um, the ferry overdrive unit which is this unit on the back here which made for good fuel consumption another image of the uh, the same one slightly better quality again you can see the the actual chassis is in really good condition at the, at the time it had been it was a zinc galvanized chassis it had been treated and sprayed with um, under seal with uh, the undercoat and other than a few minor patches which I'll point out later on it was in really good condition um, I wasn't too worried about the actual the main running gear at all so as you can see that's a little bit of the rust that was on the bottom of the door frame nothing too major though um, which is good slightly different view there and there the there are the the foot panels that my father replaced so not an ideal work I think he made them from scratch using some um, sheet steel and um, sort of beat the the shapes in there were some original parts left over however it uh, they, they weren't rusty they were just added to so I didn't see any reason why I needed to change them. A little bit more rust damage in the bottom of the uh, bottom of the door frame. Again, not much though. And the driver's side foot uh, footwell. Again, a little bit of surface rust. Nothing major though. And all of the window, all of the the glazing parts. You can see that the the actual running strips. They they were completely gone. Um, which is not surprising really because it's just uh, uncoated U-shaped pieces of metal covered in felt and um, they always rust so they, they obviously need, needed replacing another shot there of the gearbox so as we go we're breaking it down a bit more the roof has now come off all the doors are off I've emptied it the engine was still in place at this this point. Um, I'm st what I'm doing, I'm still removing all of the body panels. Slightly different view there. Another view from the inside. Okay, so at this point I've removed the front wheels and it's now on axle stands, ready for the front axle to be taken off. Slightly different view there. That's the engine compartment, slightly cleaner. Um, I got rid of all of the, the, the bird's nests and the um, the nests that the uh, the mice had made. So here we are. Here we are with all of the body panels off and the engine removed. And the actual running gear was in in fairly good shape. The the gearbox was in good condition. The the both axles. The, it has the the rear axle is a the Salisbury axle, the heavy duty one. And the, they were all, other than one of the brake shoes that had rusted solid, and uh, that had to be broken free. Other than that, it was the, in pretty good condition. The the springs needed a bit of you know surface rust removing, but again, all good. A few different views there. View from the rear, and as as you can see, the chassis um, very limited damage to it. There is an image in a short while that shows the only major bit of damage on it. Fuel tank still in, in place, all good on the electrics. Um, I decided to replace all of the electrics because some of the wiring had corroded and um, well, it just wasn't labelled up very well so it needed replacing. Last shot of the, uh, the gearbox there and the um, has the dual, the dual braking system on this which has the, the switch in the middle so if, if the front or the back fails uh, the alarms the alarm is triggered so the the rear tub the cross member on the rear tub as is your standard uh, that had rusted badly and you can see that it's actually completely corroded away at this point here you can actually see the underneath of the tub through the framework and uh, me being a bit of a cheapskate I decided to make my own and um, I think the next few images show 
what I uh, what I did and what I made. So the first thing to do was to remove the rusted cross member. Ah, this is the only damage to the chassis, and it was approximately five inches across from here to here. It's on the rear cross member. You can see there's there's one of the handles, and it was just a pool where where some water had pooled underneath where the the undercoat had lay. So it's just a small part here. However, it was only surface rust. Um, I took an um, an angle grinder to it with uh, with a wire wheel and brought it down, and there was no damage. It hadn't gone through the actual main part of the the, the metal, just surface rust, which was lucky. However, there's a slightly better shot of the cross member on the rear tub, so that that was completely gone, completely shot through. shots there so I removed the cross member cleaned up the tub you can see that the uh, some of the aluminium has gone through so I actually on the inside replaced it with a another with a square piece of aluminium tubing which went inside which is what you can just see poking through there and that's before I inserted the tubing so you can see there's there was a there was a bit of damage but nothing major Okay, and surface rust on, uh, or surface corrosion on the aluminium body panel there on the underneath of the tub. So this is what I came up with. Slightly over-engineered um, at the time. Not much experience welding, so please don't laugh at the quality of the welds. However, it's made with a piece of four mil box section, and I believe it was. 50 mil uh, right angle welded on to sort of emulate the the cross member that was taken off. There you, there you go. You can see. I even added the cutouts so the ribs on the tub would not foul up against it, so it would it would fit back in place, and it was almost identical in size, so just made of a lot thicker steel. A few more shots there. Now, at this point, I decided to change the engine for, you can see the old, there's the old engine in the background, that's the old five main bearing petrol, and I decided to replace it with a 200 TDI, which I had uh, found. So that, that, that was the plan, and I was really surprised when I this this was a this image was taken when I did a dry fit, so shortly before this I've I've married it up now with the gearbox, and I believe one of the next pictures there we go there's a slightly better image, so the that's the original gearbox from 1977, this is a 200 TDI engine from the mid 90s I believe, it came out of a discovery, and I was very impressed that the clutch and the bell housing all lined up perfectly there was no modifications required they just bolted together and it just worked straight away which was quite impressive slightly different view there so at this point I've also cleaned up the gearbox and the engine I just gave it a jet wash so that, again this this is just a dry fit just to make sure that everything every, everything fit, fitted in place I believe the only thing I had to do with the engine was remove one of the engine mounts and take the engine mount off the petrol engine and put it on this one uh, just so it so just so it lined up because obviously on the on the discovery it's in a slightly different place so the actual engine itself the diesel engine when I purchased it it had sat in someone's shed for two years I believe it hadn't run in all of that time I was taking a bit of a gamble on this because I at this point I hadn't had it running I just hoped and prayed that it would run that it would run when uh, I came around to it however I carried on fitting the engine making sure everything was working correctly there's uh, an image a little later on showing the downpipe I made for the exhaust and that that should come up in a short while. There's another shot of the gearbox. 
painted the uh, cross member for the rear tub. That's where I just prepped the underneath of the tub to uh, to take it. Again, please don't laugh at the uh, the welding. It's strong enough. So this was while the when, when I got the engine, the, the diesel engine, it came with the the intercooler and the radiator and obviously this radiator has the oil cooler and if I was fitting the diesel engine I couldn't use the old uh, radiator from the from the petrol one uh, so I decided to use this use the the, uh, the correct radiator and in order to make this fit I had to modify the front grille to take it so it needed a few it needed a, a plate mounting on the front at the top which there's a photograph in a short while so I basically made a a mounting plate which bolted to the original bolt holes where the the original radiator mounted and it used the the locating pins here on the top of the radiator to hold it in place and similarly at the bottom but this was just while I was positioning it just to make sure that it would actually fit and I was uh, Light, making sure everything lined up correctly. So there we go. There's that's me double checking to make sure all of the the oil lines fit okay. Again, everything seems to be working okay with that. I always like taking those pictures. So meanwhile, while I was doing that, I was also cleaning the front axle. So that was stripped down. I don't have any images. Of the actual process of stripping it down but the the whole axle was stripped uh, as were the springs all cleaned up but the rust was removed uh, prepped and new gaskets on the, the whole the whole axle so that that was basically waiting to be refitted I'm not 100% sure but I, I painted it black gloss I think it was the only paint I had lying around So there's the bulkhead that I took off. Again, it was just stripped down. The this is just the grey primer that was put on, but it was um, any surface rust was removed, and um, it, it came up quite well. It, it came up. It was in good condition. Slightly different view there from the front, but yeah, as, as you can see, it's in it's in pretty good condition. So that's with the axle fitted back in now. This is a few months later, I believe, when, when all of the running gear was done. So I'd, I'd done the front axle and the rear axle at this point. So the, the bulkhead's back on. And the actual, and the, the tub at the back as well. So they're all now fitted again. The engine looks like it's um, not in the best condition, but, but it was basically being used as just as storage, so you can see that everything's just been piled on top. Okay, so these are the brackets that I made and bolted to the chassis, and this is where the mounting holes for the radiator are. So it's slightly different to the the way that the Series 3 radiators are mounted. That's mounted directly to the 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 front the, the the front body panel whereas this because it was a slightly bigger radiator and it didn't line up I had to mount it using these these plates and the one on top which I should which should be um, visible in a minute in a minute so this is me the again forgive the paint job it um, this was being done on a budget and I just needed to get some color on it and um, yeah no comment but yeah th so th this is the brake and the clutch pedals fitted the steering steering box is in as well a different view uh, this is the first time it had actually rolled out the building on it back on its wheels and this was just to make some space in the uh, in the garage just to um, work on another 
I think I was working on the roof I was about to move the roof in so I could take the, the parts off you can see the roof and the roof rack down in the bottom left here just a few shots around so this was the uh, the downpipe that I made on for the uh, exhaust pipe obviously using a the 200 TDI I couldn't use the existing exhaust uh, pipes because of the the layouts completely different so I used some 50 millimeter tubing I think it was four mil wall thickness and made up a uh, made up a downpipe I was quite pleased with that again welding I'm not a welder in any way but um, basically I I cut and mounted it tacked it in place just to get the actual shape there and then welded it and then ground down the welds so it had a smooth finish and that's it in place so the old route that the exhaust pipe took was down the inside of the chassis and then it ran along the side where the gearbox is however with this configuration it couldn't go that way so I opted to go along the outside of the chassis running underneath the the body panels also I'm not going because the rear fuel tank you crosses the the whole rear of the vehicle I didn't want to take this any anywhere near it so I opted to go out of the side so this is a sort of homebrew muffler again it worked worked very well when when the engine was up and running it um, it was it, it nice and smooth very quiet and the actual exhaust exits before just before the rear wheel on the passenger side again please don't laugh at the welding I, I actually left the pipe long because I wasn't sure I wasn't quite sure whereabouts it wanted to come out so I basically left I left it running for a while and a number of times I caught my leg on it was um, it was not funny so there's the front grill now with the radiator mounted things are starting to come in place and this is the plate that I made for the top of the radiator mount it was just a piece of uh, two mil um, bar and I just added these two little lobes here drilled a hole lined them up bolted it on and it held the radiator in place um, I also needed to have a, um, a water tank as well for the the radiator and that was taken from an old Ford Mondeo that I had stripped down and um, it seemed too good to uh, too good to throw away so I repurposed it and it found a home there so you can see the body panels are starting to go back in now the, the seats are going in the uh, the front fascia is back on it's starting to uh, starting to get there and when when the the wings were back on and the bonnet was back on it was in, it was in a position where I was quite happy it it looked it looked like a Land Rover again instead of just a pile of bits even with the um, the roof missing and the the, uh, the back parts missing it still looks like a Land Rover very identifiable so a little bit more a little bit more uh, work to it and it's shortly after that at this point when uh, other things got in the way family um, other you know job commitments and the amount of time that I could spend on this started to dwindle and I got to the point where I fitted the roof and got the engine up and running and that was about where I'd left it and that was a good few years ago and this is an image that was taken a couple of years ago with that's my daughter there, there I think she was probably about 10 so this image was taken about four or five years ago and that's its current condition this is where it where it where it's it's currently lying uh, the electrics were in the radiator is in there's uh, an electric fan again taken from a stripped down Ford Mondeo for the cooling 
all of the running gear works the um, every, everything is there it is technically drivable at this point however there's no the the rear windows are missing the rear doors missing all of the side doors are missing the roof is only held on with one or two bolts the roof rack was placed in 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 that position because it was in the way of something else so there is still a fair amount of work to be done but it does work which was the important thing so it it's now in a position where a minimal amount of work is needed to get it back on the road so when time and opportunity presents itself I will be finishing it um, and I'll be quite happy when I can drive it back on the road so that, that was the last image that I actually took of it however I do have some footage with when I first started the engine now some people may not believe me but this was quite literally the first time this engine had started in well, I, I had had it for two years, and when I bought it, it had sat in someone's garage for two years as well. So this is the first time the engine's run in at least four years. And I was, you, you may not be able to tell from my face in the footage, but I was incredibly surprised. So here is the fairly low quality video taken on uh, my mobile phone there is a small tub here containing diesel because at this point the fuel line wasn't in place and I didn't want to have a large amount of diesel around an engine that I was uh, th that was of an unknown uh, quality just in case there was any problems I could quickly remove this and starve it of fuel however I'll play this now and uh, hopefully you should get an idea of again how surprised I was. Um, the only thing I had done was done the electrics, I'd sorted the electrics out for the starter, I had primed, I'd pumped diesel into it so the, the actual system was primed with diesel but it, it hadn't cranked at this point so I'll let it play and um, you can be as surprised as I was. <laughs> So that is um, where where it currently stands. I'm hoping at some point, as I say, to be able to continue this project. It is one that the Land Rover has been in the family that long that I can't I can't see about I, I can't get rid of it. Um, it the, there's there's too too many memories associated with it, and it is in really good condition. You know, you you see some videos on YouTube and the likes and the 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 chassis is completely shot to bits and you know the, the the bulkhead's gone and they still you know spend the time and the effort to to rebuild them now this is in far better condition than any of those and it would be crazy to leave it to 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 rot again so it is my plan to get this up and running and I would like to take it back on one of the old holidays, take it back to that beach where all of the, where that first image was taken, which that one. I'd like to go back to there. Um, obviously, I'm a bit bigger than I, I, I was in that picture, but it would be great to find that beach and take it back to that beach and um, go full circle, as it were. So I've, uh, I've rabbited on quite long enough there. I probably have to edit this video down quite a fair bit, but um, I hope people like what they've seen I apologize for it not being a video as such but as as you can see these are just snaps that were taken during the uh, during the process 
and hopefully over the next coming months I will have uh, an update on this project. So thanks again for watching and uh, if you liked what, what you've seen please, um, please subscribe and um, if you think anyone else would like to, uh, to see what's going on uh, with this channel uh, and with this project please uh, pass on the information, let them, uh, let them have a look and uh, thanks for watching.